sometimes people think that you should just instantly be good at things. And that it keeps them from doing something. I mean, I've done that. Oh. <laughs> As a person. I... I'm not even really sure how to describe myself. I was always into the art. I was always into like alternative things like tattoos. One of my first ones, it was supposed to be the time that I was born, but my mom told me the wrong time. So <laughs> I had my first beer when I was 14. After that, I was always just like kind of an animal. Just wanted to be all over the place. around a lot just because I wanted to move around a lot. I lived in Olympia, Washington for a few months and I moved to Montana with my parents because I had no money. <laughs> I worked at a fish processing plant doing quality control in Alaska for a few summers. Brutal. And that's when I decided to go to school in Hawaii. And so I went to school on and off for a few years. My parents told me that my college fund was running out and then I was like, I didn't know what that meant for me. I had no real goals with what I wanted to do with my life. I didn't care about a lot of things. I didn't have any real goals with what I wanted to do with my life even when I moved down here. I was like, I want to be an osteologist. And then that didn't work out. So I went to phlebotomy school, and I worked in a hospital for a year and a half. And then I was like, this sucks. I started to see all the waste and contamination that comes even with just the medical field. And I decided to go into environmental science. When I met her in the lobby downstairs, she was wearing an Iron Maiden shirt. Immediately I was like, oh cool, this worked out good. That was when I was like, this is Paul. This will be cool. So we've had a tough week in the lab. It's like in the Matrix when Neo's on the top of the building and he's going to try and fly for the first time. We got the fall out of the way. You know, the next one, we're going to fly. Be like Neo. That should be our lab motto. Yeah. Yeah, the sure. next shirt, we could put that on there. I think that there's this stereotype that scientists are somehow a little bit more refined in their tastes. <laughs> but I don't think that's necessarily true scientists to the outside world. They're this weird, asocial, nerdy, we only listen to classical music while sipping champagne. There are a lot more metalhead scientists than you think. Which I, I didn't know either. <laughs> Paul is also a metalhead, little known fact. For pH 5, it's going to be potassium dihydrogen phosphate. Okay. Brenna's someone that stands out and I'll show you that today in the lab. When she started working with one of our more challenging projects, probably the most challenging project, she picicked it up really fast. How are the Brady Gray Zobium doing? I've made everything except the... I went into microbiology, this lab, without any real knowledge of microbiology. Bright yellow. Like just from the get-go. I was like, this is really cool. It's like finding out the secrets of life. Arizona is a really unique place. Scientifically, it's really cool because we're by a number of mountain ranges. We can sample most of the year. But this looks good. Yeah, so I think if we just dig a plot right through here. I like learning about the processes behind all the science that we're doing. This looks good. What do you think, Brenna? Good place for a hole. Good place for a hole. <laughs> All right. Microbes have the most important roles on Earth. Let's confine up top here. They drive the climate. They drive the geochemistry and biogeochemistry of Earth. They are all over us, in the soil and in the water. So the bacteria that live down here, nobody's grown them in the lab. 
We don't know what they're doing down this far in the soil. We don't know how they live. So hopefully we'll get one or two of them in culture. You smell that? It's the smell of microbiology. I love that smell. Microbiology is working with the magical and the invisible. Everything is details. Do we have to record on the bag the depth? It just takes time and practice and patience. And being kind to yourself. All right. Especially if you fail. Success. Which will happen a lot in science. In an experiment, you get one microliter wrong of a certain chemical and they won't grow. They'll just be like, meh, I'm done. My most recent project, the bacterium that I was working with, we were seeing if it released methane. Methane's bad, it contributes a lot to global warming. The amount of work that goes into constructing these projects from our perspective is a lot spent like 10 months of my life doing this. I would go after classes, working at the library, seven hours, testing its growth curve, over a month. I even stayed home for my winter break to work on it. And then now in a bunch of the samples again. We had some bad news relatively recently for one of our projects. You know, the data don't lie. We sent them off to test for methane and we got the results back and they are inconclusive. Which sucks. I was like, well, that's life. Failure happens. Things don't work. People are like, oh, you should celebrate your failures and your successes. I don't know how you celebrate a failure, though. Yeah, I don't really feel like it. On to the next thing. I'm so glad that I gave myself time to grow into the person that I am now, because I'm now willing to put in the work now that I've screwed around long enough. Science, it does make me feel empowered. It's increased my sense of curiosity about the world. So we're approaching the, the top of our critical zone observatory here. Actually head up to the top of this tower above the canopy of the trees. I want to get into bioremediation. It's using natural elements to help combat contamination. I got exposed to that kind of work a lot actually because that's what my dad does. When I was younger, my dad would sometimes bring me out with him on his projects. There was a lot of mine sites there, a lot of contamination. It was making the kids sick. But you know, the person who really, really got me into the environment was my mom. She taught me the importance of nature. And I think, bless my family for being so patient and helping me along the way, because I was kind of a dumbass. <laughs> uh, it took me a long time to figure out everything. Okay, okay. Oh my God. <laughs> you should give yourself time to figure that out. All of these trees are basically transpiring water back to the atmosphere. How does this relate to the microbial communities and in the more arid regions? How are we different from the general public? So I think that uh, we're not. We're not any different. I kind of have to go to the bathroom, so we might have to make our way down. Watch out, guys! Yeah, yeah, <laughs>